Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, the youth group is planning a trip to Holiday World on Monday, August the 6th. This is for grades 6, 7, and 8. And if, they plan, if you plan to go, sign up on the bulletin board. And permission slips are required, to ta uh, so take one with you and fill it out. Also, uh, today, uh, there is no adult Bible class, and all of you are invited to the fellowship hall. Patty Wynn uh, will portray a bystander when John, the Bap uh, John baptized Jesus, and so you might like to be there for that presentation. The Voters' Assembly meets this uh, Tuesday, July the 24th at 7 in the Trinity Rooms, and you may pick up an agenda uh, at the Welcome Center. Be sure to sign up for the Golden Eagles uh, uh, today, and also the Sunday School students will remember their baptism next week, so be ready to share pictures and stories. Let us begin the worship service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is our righteous shepherd. He does not scatter us, but gathers us together. He makes us lie down in green pastures, and feeds us with the bread of life. He leads us in the paths of righteousness. Beloved in the Lord, we have not lived a life worthy of our righteous shepherd. We have all built dividing walls of hostility. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have been divisive and have failed to live at peace with one another. At times we have treated others as inferior because of differences of language and race, intelligence and appearance, gender and age. Forgive us for our prejudice 
and break down the walls that divide us from one another and from you. You were once foreigners and strangers to God, but now you have been brought near by the blood of Christ. He himself is our peace. Jesus Christ died and was raised for you so that you might be reconciled with God and with one another. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Through Christ we are no longer strangers, but we are members of the household of God. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving, make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, he prepares rain for the earth, he makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the beasts their food, and to the young ravens that cry. His delight is not in the strength of a horse, nor his pleasure in the legs of man. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. You open my hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for this day is found in the 23rd chapter of the book of Jeremiah, beginning of verse 1. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people. You have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his day, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And the epistle reading is found written in the second chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Christians at Ephesus, beginning at verse 11. Therefore, remember that at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision, by what is called the circumcision, which is made in flesh, the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you, who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens 
with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, man ate of the bread of the angels. He sent them food in abundance. Alleluia. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> the apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. And he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups of, uh, on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. It's found on the inside cover of the back of your hymnal. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is our epistle lesson, which was read moments ago from Ephesians uh, chapter 2, beginning at uh, verse 11. And uh, as uh, we proceed with the message today, I would ask you to open up your uh, bulletins to the epistle lesson or the Bible that you have in the pew. I'll be reading out of the NIV translation, and that's the translation of the Bible that is in your pew. In the bulletin, it is the English Standard Version, so there will be a little difference in some of the wording. We bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you into this morning hour, and we thank you for giving us this day to live for you and for others. We pray that we would hear your word today and that your spirit would make it come alive in our lives, that the walls of hostility have been torn down by what your son did for us on the cross. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Fellow redeemed in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. In our text for today, uh, you will notice that there are probably three good points that I would like to make. First of all, is that the wall of hostility that we call sin has been taken care of by Jesus. Secondly, that the wall of hostility between Jews and Gentiles was also destroyed by Jesus because of his death on the cross. And then thirdly, the walls of hostility that you and I put up with other Christians within this fellowship or other Christians outside of this church. And so we will be looking at three points about hostility today. First point, I would like to go back to verses 8 and 9 of chapter 2 in the book of Ephesians. And you probably know that by heart by now. By grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no man can boast. The walls of hostility we call sin was with mankind since the Garden of Eden. And we talked about that last week in the message. And indeed, that wall of sin came because the first, our first parents, Adam and Eve, sinned against God. And because of that sin, a wall of hostility was built between God and man. But that wall of hostility was brought low because of Jesus' death on the cross. He took our sin on his own person on the cross. As Paul writes to the Corinthians, he said, He who knew no sin was made sin for us. He died in our place. He took our sin. And by his blood, you and I are the forgiven people of God. We have new life that we talked about last week. Life right now. A new life that has been redeemed by Christ so that we can live and live life to the full. And also that third gift, the blessings of Christ's death on the cross his burial and resurrection, that we're going to heaven someday. And what a day that will be. But individually, that wall has been brought low by Jesus. In our text, it begins by saying, Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised, by those who call themselves the circumcision, that done in the body by the hands of men, 
Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from the citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. So at one time, the Gentiles were outside. We know that God picked the Jews in the Old Testament of all the people in the world. He chose the Jews to be his people, and they were the people of the covenant, the very many covenants that God gave them. But, as we hear in our text, it says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made peace uh, the two one and destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. Now, those of you that know your Bible and have studied it and know that there was quite a difference between the Jews and the Gentiles. Indeed, the Jews had, had many ceremonial laws that they obeyed. They had, food, they had laws of what they could eat and what they could not eat. They even had laws of how many steps you could walk on the Sabbath day. That's just to name a few. And these Gentiles were outside. And the Jews, because they had the ceremonial laws, looked down upon these Gentiles. And so you have Jew and Gentiles. There are two groups that we are told in our text that have been made one and made one in Christ. In other words, Jesus died for Jew and Gentile alike. And by his death on the cross, these ceremonial laws are done away with. And we see that in the book of Acts when there was this first conference of Jerusalem, or you can say the first uh, uh, church council with the apostles getting together and and it was there that they came to the conclusion that it was okay because between Jew and Gentile because of Jesus and what Jesus did for them with his death on the cross the two have been made one now, it goes on, his purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. In other words, no longer could the Jews see themselves as, as more important, if you will, than the Gentiles. For Christ died for them both. And they both now are together. They are one. And that's an important thing to remember, especially as we go to the third wall of hostility. And that's the wall that we erect between us and others within the household of faith here. And you know what I'm talking about, how we can get our dander up because so-and-so said this or did that, and all of a sudden we ourselves start building the wall of hostility. But the good news is that Jesus even broke down that wall of hostility by his death on the cross. You and I, who are his children by faith in, in Jesus, look to reconcile ourselves to others of whom we may have a disagreement or, or maybe a fight or whatever it could be, the wall that we put up between us and others. But also, 
Another wall of hostility that needs to be addressed is how we see other Christians within Christendom today. When we get to go to heaven someday, heaven is not just going to be filled with Lutheran Christians, but it will be filled with all who have faith in Jesus Christ. Because it is in Christ alone that the Spirit works through the Word to create faith. A faith that believes that Jesus died on the cross, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. They will be with us in heaven. Now there are other walls that end up being built because of what we believe within the Lutheran Church. Our teaching regarding baptism, our teaching regarding the Lord's Supper, and all the other teachings that we hold to in our Lutheran faith. But we constantly are seeking with other denominations today sharing the word with them and sharing that word because through the spirit who who brings truth to that word may enlighten hearts not only theirs but also our very own because heaven is the home of all who believe in Jesus I'm reminded in the book of Revelation And what a passage this is about those who are in heaven, especially on the last day when Christ comes. Revelation chapter 7, the Apostle John writes, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels standing around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures, they fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God by saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Wow, what a scene that'll be. Because all who believe in Jesus will be there. It will be fantastic. So what do we do with the walls that we build up and the walls that Christ himself would destroy? We repent of our time of building up them walls. We repent of our sin, of not loving God with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength and not loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. And the good news is that Jesus died on the cross. You are forgiven. You are forgiven because those walls of hostility have been torn down by Christ alone. May you and I live our lives in the new life that we have daily, being moved with the gospel, the love of God in Christ, to seek reconciliation with those whom we've had or are on the outs with in our lives. May we do so for God's glory and for the extending of his kingdom Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through faith unto Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please take a moment.
assign uh, the worship card in your pew, identifying your attendance today. If you're going to take communion in a little while, we ask that you sign the back side of the card. And let us gather up our offering for the ministry here at St. John's and the other ministries that we support with our missions so that God's kingdom indeed will be blessed to the joy of many. We gather our offering. Any gifts? He has given us clothing and shoes, house and home, food and drink, money and possessions. He richly and daily provides us with all that we need to support this body and life. With thanksgiving, we offer back to him the first fruits of his good gifts. For the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For all families and family relationships, especially those that are strained by division, that God would break down the dividing walls of hostility and reconcile people to one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the nations of the world, that there be peace among all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all immigrants and refugees, that they are be welcomed to their new homes and be treated with, uh, not treated with hatred and hostility, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For all pastors who shepherd their congregations, that they not scatter their flock, but serve faithfully under our good shepherd, Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. mercy. For those who mourn the death of loved ones, that they find hope in the resurrection and return of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who celebrate special occasions and answered prayers, uh, we ask that you would bless uh, Megan Barnes and James King, who were united in marriage yesterday, and that they, their joy and witness and that their joy be a witness to the goodness of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who are sick and recovering, we ask that you would be with Jack Cly, Ruth Holland, Rochelle Allward, who are in need of healing. Be with those who are in the hospital, Mary Lee uh, Prummer, uh, Marie Tate, Dana Keller, Keller's mother, Bill Orr, a friend, Don Prosser. Be with John Romero, who will be having surgery on Tuesday. And we thank you for letting little John David, the newborn son of Andrew and Carissa Snow, be able to go home to the home with them. Uh, we commend them all to your loving and gracious care, and we ask that you would touch the lives of all who are gathered here and who are members of this congregation and their families, if there is any sickness, that they would experience your healing hand and that their joy uh, would be filled and that they would always rely on the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your promises. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give thanks, thanks and praise. praise. 
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way to, of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. and minds we bring to our Lord in the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped. When he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
take a moment to greet each other with the peace of Christ. <laughs> you guys peace.